It's been quite a while since I've gone and done one of these. I'm going to be honest with you. I haven't had the drive or the passion to be as creative as I may have been in the past. I feel like I lost something, but I can't put my finger on what it is. Besides the obvious dog and pony show that is taking the world by a shitstorm, and like most of yous, I've watched the simmering saucepan of social media culture become more divided and brutalized than an Eastern Bloc brothel after hours and somehow transform entire countries into large-scale gulags and tyrannically empowered tempered towns of tools where logic is banished and your opinion can shut the fuck up. While the growing number of lemmings increase, there seems to be an awakening taking place. Is it too little too late? I don't want to think so. At the end of the day, it's still a numbers game. Just like you see in nature shows where a small mammal can be overpowered by millions of pissed off ants, each individual reacting because the smell of adrenaline and blood is in the air. Unsure of why or what to do, but just responding to the barometer as a third little pressure cooker from the sun teeters dangerously close to the red. Well, whether it's real paranoia or fake emotional underpinning, or the fact that two to eight year old boys and girls of our planet are going to potentially grow into sociopathic psychos by the time we hand over the reins, or is that even a worry? Because after X generation is gone, and the Y generation wonders how to resolve, will, will there be a new watchful eye? Will a sentient super synthetic intelligence watch over them like a babysitter's iPad, rendering just the right dosage of dopamine and serotonin at the right times to keep them content? I don't know what this really means anymore. To be content. I mean, I guess I know what it means to me personally because I already had a low standard to begin with. I used to find solace in the struggle to help people, either help them with a laugh or with information. That's about all I can afford anyway. This is, after all, the edge of the apocalypse. But if being happy or content is merely having the things and people you love and admire and find support in supporting nearby, and you can afford a smile or a belly laugh, isn't that enough? Who am I to fuck that up for them? By which standard do I define the bar with? Well, I have an answer for that. Now you can go right ahead and tell me how silly I am and mistakenly peg me as a dumb boomer with no insight. But here, put this in your sights for a moment. Now, it's not always been like this. It also doesn't happen overnight. Now, to some, we're like the fruit flies of the planet. Around for what seems like a while, granted, but in the bigger picture, fruit flies, that would be a stretch. We don't even live long enough to make an amoeba sweat. One thing we had were options. My generation saw the introduction of the fax machine, mobile telephony, worldwide computer networks, and gum that tastes like soap. We knew what it was like to sneak out of the house at night, you know, when the parents slept off the wine of the preceding night. We climbed trees, threw stones at abandoned buildings, played with lawn darts, caught frogs and lizards, felt the thrill of impending punishment for the stuff that we didn't get away with and dealt with the shame of what we did. None of it was perfect, but it was real. It was real because we made it what it was. We had the ability to use imagination in ways that would put us in the loony bin today. The thrill of growing up today is but a mere echo of our past. And well, if I wasn't a geezer and if I knew what the hell I was looking at right now, I'd have more to say about it. But we had options, damn it. We have to hold ourselves to an imperative duty. It's, it's not good enough to simply just be alive. The entire human experience is built upon a global ecosystem and universe of options. If those options aren't available, it won't matter what I think. It won't matter to the children that grow up not knowing what they're missing. They'll look back at us as if we're the problem. 
We'll tear down the statues of our past so they don't have to live with the memories that shame them for being different and less like us. Because when you're born into a system, it becomes your shepherd. Whether raised by flesh and blood guardianship or by a sentient toaster, there's only one answer. The options must remain on the table. They must remain so they can be experienced and evaluated firsthand, not judged by gossip, memes, or scrapbooking. Not remembered, but felt, experienced. They can, they can go and throw it away if they don't want it. But it's the last thing that we're here to do. And we have one job, and that's to leave the place as good or even a little better than we found it. I think we shit the bed. I mean, it wasn't that pretty at the beginning, but uh, our progenitors at least made the best of it. Not all of them. I mean, much of what's happening now in the world has already been seen in our past, but just enough of that evil was stalled and hindered so that the love could shine through the bullshit. Many things that have stood the test of time on a human scale have almost instantly vanished within my lifetime. It makes me sad to hear phrases abused like, we're all in this together and don't eat yellow snow. I urge my generation to leave this mortal coil having tried to preserve the sanctity of choice. And choice can only be exercised if the options are available. It's time to have more than excuses and cop-outs. It's time for ideas and actions. Don't blame the game. Become the game. If your leaders aren't worth voting for, then become the leader you want to see running. Lead by example and from the front. Don't wait for someone to pencil your rights into a box for you. Exercise your rights. Others will follow suit. Exercise humility, patience, and honor. And kick to the curb those sons of bitches that want to take that away from us and our future generations. Hold them accountable, not only as an example, but as a symbol of the fairness that we want to see. Nobody should suffer, and nobody should ever get away with trying to take away our options. It's what makes us human. It's how we remain human. <laughs>